Manga is a medium that has been prevalent for decades and has only grown in popularity within recent times. But one series in particular is notable and praised by so many people, even receiving two separate anime adaptations. This series is Hunter x Hunter. Now, the series itself is phenomenal, but every work needs an author. And in the case of Hunter x Hunter, that legendary mangaka is none other than Yoshihiro Togashi. Togashi has been regarded as one of the greatest mangaka of all time. From his work on Hunter x Hunter, Yu Yu Hakusho, and the plethora of other manga that he has published and or had part in creating, Togashi has solidified himself as one of the greatest to have ever written a manga. Now, speaking of being the greatest, he wasn't always known as the legendary manga creator that we all know and regard him as. Togashi was born on April 27th, 1996 in Shinjo, Yamagata, Japan. He was always artistic as a child, drawing manga in his early years of elementary school and even joining fine arts clubs and eventually enrolling in Yamagata University in hopes of becoming a teacher. At the age of 20, he wrote the manga Butobi Straight, for which he was awarded the Tezuka Award, Japan's most prestigious award for emerging comic artists. His dreams of becoming a teacher slowly fell through, as he was contacted by an editor under Weekly Shonen Jump who had asked him to drop everything and moved to Tokyo during his senior year of university. Togashi published a few more minor romance and comedy manga at the start of his career, like Okami Nante Kawakunai and Tende Shawaru Cupid, which all released before his big break in 1990 with Yu Yu Hakusho. Following Togashi's sporadic tenure within the romance manga industry, he decided to dip his toes into a new genre, one that he would spend a lot of time with, that being his time in the Battle Shonen manga, specifically in Weekly Shonen Jump. Togashi decided to pitch a brand new series idea to the heads of Weekly Shonen Jump, and he got his idea within the magazine by creating Yu Yu Hakusho. Or, well, Ghost Files, but no one really calls it that. Yu Yu Hakusho in its early stages was an episodic series in which we'd follow our main character of Yusuke Yurameshi trying to come back to life after he died saving a kid from a car accident. We see a lot of framework in his early writing about messages he'd carry on throughout his entire career, a specific one being the value of life in Yusuke in which he doesn't want to come back to life within the first chapter, but after seeing how his life impacted others, he decided he had a life worth living and wanted to come back to it. Following that, we see Yusuke go through a lot of journeys in spirit world as well as the human realm and overall just building this world that we've come to love for the next several hundred chapters. The series then takes a big turn when we finally pivot to the battle shown in section of the story. Yusuke comes back to life finishing the previous arc and becomes a spirit detective for spirit world. In doing this, he encounters two demons which would become central parts of the story in Hiei and Kurama and then he also tags along Kuwabara, a longtime rival of his throughout the story. After following a lot of basic shonen tropes, we finally get to Togashi's first major arc in the story, that being the Dark Tournament. The Dark Tournament arc was excellent in its setup, as it really got Yusuke into a vulnerable state. Togashi was really looking to explore the human condition throughout this section of the story through Toguro, the main antagonist, and Yusuke. Throughout this arc that many have hailed to be the greatest tournament arc in all of anime and manga, we see so many spectacular fights and it's really Togashi in his element, as he was creating some of the best choreographed fights as well as drawing some of the most detailed art of his career. On top of all of that, weaving in intricate and complex elements into his story. Whether it was Kurama's identity struggle throughout the tournament trying to figure out what life to lead, the Yoko Kurama of the past or his new life as a human, or it's Yusuke's journey through humanity and figuring out what makes somebody strong, their humanity or deviating away from humanity. Or even our main antagonist of Toguro who tackles both of these questions at the same time. Togashi from top to bottom was in his bag in this arc and you can see him enjoying this arc all throughout and just creating complex narratives as well as interesting fights that propel the story to be something special. The mold of this story at its core had a lot of basic shonen tropes, yeah, but you can really see Togashi branching out and doing something different all throughout with all these darker themes and ideas being brought up through these corrupted individuals hosting the dark tournament. Which leads us to the conclusion of what many consider to be the greatest tournament arc in all of shonen as well as the greatest arc in all of Yu Yu Hakusho, Chapter Black and the Introduction to the Demon World. Chapter Black is the first and noticeable part in the manga where you can really see Togashi struggle with what he wants to do with it. We see this through the lens of our main character Yusuke as he really is struggling with what he wants to do. Yusuke in the beginning part of this arc struggles with a sense of purpose now that he defeated Toguro and figured out what he wanted to do. He wanted to fight to protect his friends, but now that there's no one to fight, what does he do while he's away from it? We only see Yusuke be able to briefly ponder this question before he gets thrown into the next arc after being kidnapped, which is kind of indicative of how Togashi maybe was figuring out different ways to approach the series, but had to continue writing it no matter what and couldn't plan it out. The chapter black arc of Yu Yu Hakusho seemed to be where Togashi truly started facing all these prominent health issues that would plague the later stages of his career 
but despite all of these health issues, he had to continue to write because of Weekly Shonen Jump. Despite that, we see Togashi create one of his greatest antagonists ever and truly form what he would write about for a lot of his career. That being his antagonist of Sensui and his attack of the human condition. Sensui, like Yusuke, was a spirit detective but quit after he saw heinous acts being committed to demons by humans which made him flip his whole world perspective. The whole time he thought that demons were the worst of the worst but after he saw humans torturing demons his whole perspective flipped and the black and white view became blurred. He saw and thought that humans don't care for anything that didn't serve them in a beneficial way. I really love this arc, but I'm gonna cut it short and just skip to the finale, but if you truly haven't watched Yu Hakusho, I guarantee you, you'll like it if you give it a watch. The end of the arc sees Yusuke face off against our main antagonist of Sensui, who would've thought, and we see Yusuke's actually overwhelmed and there's no odd of him winning this fight. It was around this time and stage in the manga where Togashi began to think to himself, and I quote, I don't want to die from overwork. If I die, I want it to be when I'm having fun or when I'm drawing manga for fun. By this time in the manga, you can obviously see a decline in the line work of this manga. It's a lot more sporadic and hazy. It's not bad art, but you can definitely see that it's someone burdened drawing the manga. This manga that Togashi made purely of enjoyment became something that tortured him and was just a job at the end of the day instead of a pure passion project like it started. He couldn't get out every chapter the way he wanted to, he couldn't write the characters in the way he wanted to, and he overall just wanted to end the series at this point. Despite all of that, he had to write one more arc, one exploring Demon World. Demon World has been brought up multiple times throughout Yu Yu Hakusho and was a big part of the series. So when fans found out that this would be the final arc, they were excited, all for it to fall short of its potential. Togashi couldn't write in the way he wanted to. He says, and I quote, My attempts to deconstruct the characters were of course turned down by Jump. I didn't have the strength physically and mentally to keep doing the same thing over and over. However, begrudgingly, he had to bring the series to a conclusion one that many wouldn't like. The series had been building up to a war, but Yusuke instead decided to do another tournament arc in which the final battle, the most climactic moment of the series, he gets knocked out and we don't see the rest of the tournament. Following this release, many fans were left confused. So in the final volume release of Yu Yu Hakusho, he states, I ended Yu Yu Hakusho because of my own selfishness. I'm sorry. Although many still love and adore the series despite its flaws and the way it came to an end, and in my personal case it's my favorite anime and manga of all time, there was still a lot left to be desired. But regardless, Togashi still had to move on to his next project, one that he could write without restrictions, one that he could paint a vivid story of whatever he wanted to create, a series without limitations. This series being Hunter x Hunter, spanning across both of the anime adaptations from 1999 and 2011. Hunter x Hunter has solidified itself as one of the most notable and praised series within its medium. The series is unique in many ways, and I feel as though this is particularly why fans of the series appreciate and adore the work so dearly. Between the release of Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter, Togashi released a series called Level E, which, to be honest, wasn't anything extremely notable, but it's worth mentioning as with how drastic of a life-changing choice he made when working on Yu Yu Hakusho, he had continued to publish even more manga after being enlisted with Weekly Shonen Jump. And in 1998, Togashi had started creating Hunter x Hunter, which is a story that focuses on our main protagonist, Gone Freaks, and his following in the footsteps of his father and becoming a licensed hunter who is someone that is a qualified expert who concentrates in duties unlike we've ever seen, including tracking rare or unknown creatures, searching far and wide for treasure, exploring uncharted districts, or tracking down those who break the law. With Hunter x Hunter, Togashi wanted to create a story without limitations, one without restrictions, and that's primarily why it's a story filled with so much raw, deep, and influential emotion and themes even whilst maintaining its somewhat simple and minimalistic framework. At the start of the series, in the Hunter exam arc, Togashi lays out the general foundation for many of the series' main characters, giving us a brief understanding of who they are, their motives, and their core values. And especially with the introduction of our core four, Kiloa, Kurapika, Leorio, and, well of course, Gon, who seem to bond super quickly and create a fond relationship. The Hunter exam arc is nothing entirely special in and of itself, but it's the first introduction arc of a battle shonen series that Togashi has written in quite some time. In a story where he wants to defy the stereotypical order of certain themes and tropes, the approach he takes is one that is very reliant on progression over time for the entire cast as well as the world building. 
Following this, we get minor insight into Kilawa and his family, the Zoldic family. Kilawa had been taken to his parents' mansion in Kukuru Mountain, as we see his brother abuse him, and ultimately Kilawa being treated as an outsider amongst his own people. Albeit a minor look into his background, it's still worth noting as it sets up a lot of Kilawa's self-reliance, which is very important for his character. The groundwork set up thus far is further accentuated in the following segments in the Heavens Arena arc. Togashi strays away from creating a standalone, single, strong, antagonistic force this early on in the series, which is something that we don't really see from a lot of battle shonen series. Instead, he creates very minor antagonistic characters to push forward dynamics and themes of characters and the expansion of the world. But specifically in this arc, Togashi introduces Nen, the series' main power system, which I couldn't even explain to you if you gave me a hundred bucks. Anyways, it's at this point in the story where we begin to understand a lot more about our main characters. Kurapika speaks to a character by the name of Hisoka, which tells him that he has information of a villainous group by the name of the Phantom Troop, which is a band of villains that murdered his entire clan. Togashi slowly lays out motives and groundwork for our characters, with Gon and Kilua heading to Heaven's Arena in order to strain their strength as well as their Nen abilities, and Leorio heading back home for medical school. The plot takes a little step back, but Togashi has stated that he wants a different series, one straying away from conforming to shonen tropes and well, this is the first sign of him taking a different direction than most series would. Following this, in the York New City arc, our core four reunite after being apart and going their separate ways. Here, we finally get to have our first insight into how Togashi decides to deal with the antagonistic faces in this new series, with the Phantom Troop, but specifically, Krolo Lucifer. Togashi created this character as a way to test the morals and values of our main characters. Krolo isn't someone who is technically evil. His actions are derived from his sense of loyalty to the Phantom Troop, so it makes it difficult to characterize him as simply just another villain. This arc really brought forward the motives behind Kurapika becoming a hunter, and why he feels so deeply when faced against Krolo. It really emphasizes a strong dynamic of revenge and motivation. As of this point, Togashi has emphasized a strong basis of values and themes throughout majority of his characters, especially Kurapika and Kilua, and created a strong antagonistic group in the Phantom Troop that poses a direct threat that even follows our main characters in the following area, in the Greed Island arc. Which, by the way, I'm not really going to go over as, well, it's not a bad arc or anything, it's just that there is an arc directly after that changes everything. An arc regarded by many as not only the best arc in the series, but even the best arc in all of shonen history. The Chimera Ant arc. This arc is where Togashi really shines. This arc is where we finally get to see truly how capable of creating complex and multi-layered narratives Togashi really is. The arc commences with Gon and Kilua being hired by a man named Kite, as they're in charge of investigating a washed up insect leg that wound up on the shore. Everything from here on out just goes to show and express how complex and layered Togashi is able to create a section of an already enveloping story. Spanning through 133 chapters and 61 episodes, the Chimera Ant arc is able to express so many themes and concepts in astounding and astonishing ways throughout nearly every single character present within the arc. Questioning humanity and what it means to truly be human through the eyes of the Chimera Ants who are animal human high hybrids, nature versus nurture in the way of the chimera ants developing their own personalities whilst still being impacted by the external influences that surround them. So many characters such as Netero, Knuckle, Shoot, Poof, Yupi, Komugi, and Pito all have instances that represent themes of power, consequence, ethics, existentialism, and many more, and help in creating this arc be nothing short of a modern day masterpiece. But it only gets better. Through our protagonist Gon Freaks and the introduction to the series' main antagonistic force, Marowim. These two characters start off as polar opposites. Gon is a youthful and eager hunter on the look for his father, Jing Freaks. He is distinguished for his innocence, tenacity, and strong sense of equality. Whereas Marowim, on the other hand, is the Chimera Ant's ruler, a highly intelligent and powerful creature that poses a danger to mankind. He's first shown as a harsh and soulless commander, motivated by the thirst for power and dominance. These two appear to be polar opposite true parallels, but something strengthens this, and it's the understanding and loss of humanity. As Pito kills Gon and Killua's mentor, Kite, Gon rages. He transforms, instantly stronger, instantly older, instantly more rageful. He descends into madness and abandons his morals, his outlook, and his humanity. 
Gon mercifully kills Pito with no remorse, pushing Kilua away, letting himself go, brutally murdering her in the name of revenge, something we've never seen Gon do. After being poisoned by Netero's rose bomb during their fight, Marowem, dying, decides to play a game of Gungi with Komugi a young blind girl. During their game, Meruem, the chimera ant who we know as someone who sacrificed his own people for power, left his mother to die, and had zero regard for human life, finally starts to understand humanity and ultimately himself. We learn that he has a heart. After speaking with Komugi, Meruem can't seem to understand why he feels the way that he does, why he can't just kill her, and why he wishes to spend his final moments with her, and that he does, dying in the hands of Komugi after playing a game of Gungi. No violence, no hatred, just pure humanity. Meruem's understanding and subsequent enlightenment contrast significantly with Gon's descent into absurdity and madness, showing their dynamic in true fashion. And like true parallel lines, these two characters never even meet. All in all, Hunter x Hunter is the peak of Togashi's writing ability as a mangaka. To create such a unique and layered story that has no constraints and does not conform to standard or what a stereotypical shonen series should, and even creating arguably one of the best arcs and protagonist and antagonist dynamics in shonen history, it truly shows off his innate talent and what separates him from other mangaka. Togashi then continued on to write a few more chapters of Hunter x Hunter, but not enough to adapt them into an anime as, well, the series had went on hiatus, so there wasn't enough source material for the animation studios to go off of. But despite the series at the time not currently ongoing during the peak and start of new gen manga serialization, Togashi 100% had an influence and impact on the new generation of manga. The way in which he orchestrated character interactions, arcs in their world building, and his insane ability to layer nuance is something that other mangaka have seen throughout his works and taken into account when creating their series. Even in series such as Jujutsu Kaisen, the curse technique power system they use is heavily inspired by Nen that we see in Hunter x Hunter, and Gege Akutami, the mangaka of Jujutsu Kaisen, has also stated many times that the character of Suguru Geto had been heavily influenced by that of Shinobu Sensui from Yu Yu Hakusho. Since Togashi's injury, Hunter x Hunter had gone on an indefinite hiatus. Nobody really knew if the series would ever return, as Togashi gave no indication as to what he had in store for his masterpiece that was set to be completed. But as of late, he has been posting on an anonymous Twitter account of images of slight nods and notions as to him working on paneling with random numbered pages spread across the timeline. To my immediate knowledge, I believe he has publicly released a few more chapters of the series, but none even close to finalizing his work. Albeit, I don't think he has stated anything regarding a full return to his work on Hunter x Hunter, but a few chapters is better than none, and if he wants to finish this absolute masterclass of a series, he will most definitely have to do it one step at a time. The comeback of Yoshihiro Togashi will be the greatest to ever be witnessed by mankind. It would be a waste of talent to see this absolute genius not complete his magnum opus that is already considered as one of the greatest shonen series ever and solidify himself as the greatest mangaka of all time.